for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip up the Mad Cheese as always. We got day three of Madden 24 ratings release week and reaction from me. I'm going to give you guys today the offensive lineman, top 20 offensive lineman, and the top 20 running backs. I'm going to give you guys my opinion. I've been doing this all week. So if you guys want me to continue, as always, make sure to be subscribed to the like button. Let me know in the comment section. So I'm going to start out with linemen before I get to running backs. And I'm going to start off with the, uh, the top 20 linemen from 11 to 20. I don't typically have too much issue when it comes to like the top you know 20 from 20 to 10 but i typically do have issue with the top 10 because that's like sacred territory when you get to the top 10 there are a few guys on here that i feel like um, are kind of getting ratings based off of their um, you know their reputation or off their name more than what they've done recently guys like tyron smith who's still an 89 overall i mean the guy's never really healthy and when he is he really isn't anywhere near what he used to be as far as a tackle but he's still cracking the top 16 here at 89 creed humphrey though He's a guy that uh, PFF constantly has rated as their number one center in the league. Even ahead of guys like Jason Kelsey, who we'll see when we get to the top 10. He's only rated, rated 12th here. Uh, David Bakhtiari is another guy who probably could be rated a little bit higher. And Tron Armstead as well. But they're all you know towards the top 10, so it's really hard to complain. But I would say Craig Humphrey should probably be in the top 10 by now. A lot of people think he's the best center in the league. And I think Tyron Smith, he should definitely be lower because he's, number one, he's never healthy. And number two, what he is, he's just not, he, you know, he's an, he's an older player. I don't think he is what he, what he used to be. So in the top 10, we have a lot of movement in the top 10 and a lot of highly rated guys. Uh, similar to uh, what I was saying we could have got out of the wide receivers earlier in the week. Andrew Thomas making the top 10. I know a lot of Giants fans are going to be happy. I had a lot of people in my comments section last year telling me how good Andrew Thomas was, and he is really good. So to have him rated in the top 10, that's appropriate. He's one of the best left tackles in the league. Uh, Jason Kelsey, he's a guy who his rating didn't move at all. He was a 92 last year. He's still a 92. Uh, hard to be mad about that. Quentin Nelson. Uh, at a 92. I think his rating is a little bit higher than it was last year. All these guys could be rated higher, in my opinion. I mean, all these guys are 92. Tristan Wirfs, uh, Joel Batonio feels good, but other than that, I feel like all the 92s could be like a 94 or higher because they all have that type of ability. But, you know, it is what it is. I feel like all these linemen could be rated higher for the most part, with the exception of probably the top guys because they're rated as high as it gets. Chris Lindstrom, I think, is a guy who's moved up quite a bit, one of the best guards in the league, um, to a 93. Uh, Laramie Tunsil, love Laramie Tunsil. Loved him coming out of school in uh, in the draft years back. Great left tackle. Um, no problems there. Then we get to the top three. And my only real surprise is Zach Martin jumping ahead of Trent Williams because last year Trent Williams was a 99 overall. And I could you could argue the top three guys all deserve 99 overalls. That's kind of how I argued the receivers with Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill, and Devontae Adams. I don't have an issue with them all being 99 overalls. Uh, but that's, you know, the, to me, those are, are, are three of the best linemen in the game. So really good list there. I don't really have a ton of issues when it comes to linemen. I'm more of the uh, appreciate type at this point then we get to the top 20 running backs and running backs are a little bit more of a star position so i might take a little bit more of a stance on some of these guys um but you know there's not a ton i mean number one my one that really stands out is ezekiel elliott he played okay last year but it was to the point where he's not even on a roster right now so how is he a top 20 rated running back if you can't even crack a roster i mean that's just that's interesting to me i know he's a free agent he'll probably get signed by somebody at some point but to me the wheels have pretty much fallen off of him he's still very solid because he's you know past pro uh he's a decent receiver he's good around the goal line i mean there's there's still a lot of things he does really well but it's just weird to see his rating not move because i think he's ended last year on an 84 uh and to have him ahead of guys like Najee harris who would take him over Najee harris right now who would take him over damian pierce and the upside that he showed in his rookie season uh and not only that but like when i talk about guys who only had one opportunity to show what they're capable of doing guys like him and kenneth walker i mean i love kenneth walker don't get me wrong i think he's an amazing running back he's one of my favorite running backs in the game especially when it comes to using the seahawks but he only had one year and he's an 87 you know, which I don't really understand how, you know, because to me, him and Damian Pierce had relatively dissimilar rookie seasons. So how's he four points higher? So not a huge issue by any means. But there's a lot of running backs here that I don't really understand if you compare them stats-wise 
to other players that are on this list why there's such a huge disparity. Uh, Miles Sanders, who had a Pro Bowl, his first Pro Bowl year, 1,200, almost 1,300 yards with the Eagles. He's only coming in 86, and I'll, and I'll get to who I'm comparing him to when I get to the top 10 because I'm not really comparing him to anybody here, but um, I think he should be rated higher based off of last year's production and his career production. He averages about 1,000 yards every year as a um, all-purpose player. Moving into the top 10, and this here is, you know, we still got Dalvin Cook. I know I said earlier that um, uh, Ezekiel Elliott's still on the market. Dalvin Cook's on the market too, but the reason that he got released wasn't the same thing. I mean, it's not like Dal- Dalvin Cook got a good year last year, a Pro Bowl caliber year. If he didn't make Pro Bowl, I really don't know. But let's start towards the bottom. Tony Pollard. I know, I know I, I, I'm an Eagles fan, and I, I tend to hate on Cowboy players' ratings. Tony Pollard's a really good running back. I'm not saying he's not. But when you look at when you compare him to Miles Sanders' numbers, I mean, number one, Miles Sanders had more, you know, had a better year rushing last year. But if you look at their career numbers, Miles Sanders has better career numbers throughout too. And I know that people will say we well, didn't necessarily split carries. Well, he has. I mean, Miles Sanders has had running backs that he's had. To, the Eagles don't run a one back system. They run a they run they sw- they switch it up too. So it's just weird to me to see Tony Pollard have one season where he finally cracks a thousand yards and he just catapults towards the top of the list. I mean, I know you can say he's probably a better receiver than Miles Sanders, but if you look at the, their career once again, Miles Sanders had the best receiving year his rookie year. He had fifty catches, so even that doesn't necessarily hold water. Tony Pollard's never had fifty catches this season, but I don't want to spend too much time just hating on uh, you know Cowboys ratings. And Tony Pollard is one point behind Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor is a monster, one of the best running backs in the game, and he's there's only one point. I know last year Jonathan Taylor had a down year, but it was mostly because of injuries, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, he only had, um, you know, he had 1,800 yards his second season in the league and was one of the most dominant running backs in the league. How is Tony Pollard one point behind this guy? You know what I mean? I, and I'm not. that's not even really on Tony Pollard as much as it is on... Um, just the rating of Jonathan Taylor. He he was I think he started last year as like a 95. How do you fall all the way to an 89 when it was really injury based? Uh, I don't really understand that. He should definitely be. I still think he should be top five. I don't know who he should really uh, you know who he should jump over because top five looks pretty good. But Austin Eckler too, another guy. I think he he wasn't he like the best. Fa- I know it's fantasy football. It's not the same thing, but I think he was like the highest rated fantasy performer of all running backs last year. So. You know, run, receiving doesn't get as much love as running the ball, I guess, when it comes to running backs. But I feel like Austin Eckler should at least be a 90. So a lot of these guys, I feel like they're underrated. Uh, Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry being one point apart seems kind of, you know, Derrick Henry, to me, he's still King Henry, man. I know, I know, I think last year, um, and I, I think a lot of people are looking at King Henry like they're expecting him to fall off. A lot of these ratings feel like they're expecting these guys to fall off rather than them actually falling off. I mean, last year, King Henry still had 1,500 yards rushing and 13 touchdowns, and somehow he's only a 94. Like I said, to me, he should at least be a 95, if not higher. He's still, you know, one of the marquee running backs in the league. I mean, why do you think DeAndre Hopkins went to Tennessee in the first place? He went there because he was going to get single coverage every single play because King Henry's in the backfield, and they got to load the box with nine guys. None of these other guys are getting that type of treatment. Nobody else is getting nine guys in the box every single play to the point where the receivers are like, well, I could eat there even if they don't have a quarterback. A lot of people are predicting King Henry's downfall based on the fact I mean, that his team is. Based on the fact that the Titans, had, there were so many rumors that he was going to get traded in the offseason. It makes it feel like everybody's just waiting for him to, to lose a step and not be what he is. But he still is at this point. So wait till it actually happens before you drop his rating. That's all I'm really saying. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Other than that, thanks for watching Memory Shout Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.